What's going on, everybody? I'd like to welcome y'all back to Sync Music Mondays, man. Financial literacy for your music, where we talk about the latest and greatest in music licensing. And as always, man, tapping into your higher self, man. Shout out to my brother JS, aka the best. He'd love to be here, but he couldn't be here at the moment. So I'm holding it down for the team, man. And um, you know, as always, we start off with the word of the day. Something motivational, inspirational to help you take it to the next level. And y'all will see it up on the screen, man. So today's word of the day, and I think we tapped into this before, man. Collaboration is greater than competition. I'll say it again. Collaboration is greater than competition. So always making sure, man, that you're building with like-minded people, like-minded individuals that pour into you. You know, we always focus on adding value. And value is not necessarily attributed to money. It could be adding value spiritually mentally pouring back into you man so once again that is the word of the day but aside from that today's going to be a phenomenal day because we got a dynamic phenomenal dope guest today man this guy man he is uh he's one of the goats in hip-hop culture man talented extremely talented from the legendary crew the far side it is no other than the legendary the classic timeless slim kid trey what's up king what's good man i appreciate all that love man <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely 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 man well look we we appreciate you man we, we appreciate you and um you know just wanted to kind of just dive into man all your accomplishments man everything that you've done um so i mean i mean everybody knows man you knows the far side but um i guess um we could kind of start from the beginning like what was your start like in music man like how did you get started man Jeez, like the, the the crazy part about all of this is I, I never intended to be a, a, a MC at all. I was uh, I went to um, El Camino College. I was headed to the military, really. You know what I mean? Uh, I was I was in ROTC in high school at Inglewood High School, and um, I was going to college so I can become an officer, so I can try to fly uh, fly fighter pl uh, planes. You know what I mean? So like wow. that was my that was where I was headed in my mind. And then I had like an epiphany and I was just like, nah, that ain't for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I, I, um, I had a friend there named Robert Tillis and um, his name, uh, his, his name in the, in the rap world is the rhythm. And he had like a record out years ago. And um, I used to write rhymes for him in college. And I was just like, you know, like I was just like kind of, I was in a dance scene for sure like i was a i was a b-boy for sure for, for sure for sure you know what i mean so like that level of um being a part of the music and then i, I guess when i was growing up i sang in the choir when i was little you know um i was in choir in in um seventh grade uh i played i played the trumpet i i was in music class like you know all of that and music was definitely a part of something that i you know i was into um, I was definitely into records because my mom had like this old school. It's like this this console. It's the long one that could fit. <laughs> it's like a long one. It's like you know you open up the the slots and there's just like you know your record crates is in there, and then you know you you put your you can put like six records on one thing, and they would just <laughs> drop down. You know what I'm saying? And they would play. So I used to play records every day because I was like a latchkey kid. So I would listen to records every day when my mom was at home. And then when I was at my grandmother's house, my grandfather had like a reel to reel. I don't know if you know what a reel to reel is. Reel to reel, you're taking it back. You I have to, <laughs> I got to take it back to the reel to reel yeah. and, and the eight track. Like I seen, I seen all these parts, like the reel to reel, because my grandfather used to put the reel to reels on for their they parties they used to have, you know what I'm saying? When the companies come over and they had the, they had the, uh, <laughs> the slick bar, with the with the with the mirrors in the back and just records and just records in the you know back there you know just have you know doing their thing you know what i'm saying so i would thumb through all of their records 
you know, I would pull up the John Cole trains and I would, you know, listen to war mm. and and just like uh, New Birth and all that stuff. Man, I was just immersed in all of that. Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Classics. So that's what was feeding me this whole time. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't until like I was kind of writing for Robert Tillis, to, you know, that made me like kind of like, oh, yeah, man, let's write, let's write this song. Let's write that song. You know, I wrote a song from called Ended in Bones or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we was just like, like talking about the world and it all ends in bones and shit. You know what I mean? Some <laughs> crazy stuff like that. And, um, and Robert Tillis was like, yo, you need to meet my girlfriend's brother. And that was Jay Swift who produced Bizarre Ride to the Far Side. Mm. And so, so long story short, you know, we go to his house and, you know, he's like 16 and he's like playing these beats and I'm in college and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, he's a youngster or whatever, but them beats was knocking and he mm. had to like the 808 kicks and, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, oh man. So it was like a good environment. And then they took us to SCU which is South Central Unit that was run by Reggie Andrews, uh, who just recently passed away. But Reggie Andrews mm. is responsible for Patrice Russian. Um, oh, wow. You know, and um, he was in the Daz Band. He also, like, executive produced some Rick James uh, music. You'll see his name. He was in Motown pretty pretty thick, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we, was working, we were working with him. Uh, man, speeding, speeding the story along. We um, kind of went to his went to SCU to learn how to produce music, and mm. so that's like when I really really dove in, you know, to all the music production and stuff. And like I guess like before that and around in the college time, we used to hang out with me and Imani used to hang out with um, the guys from the Boys. I don't know the Down My Heart the Boys. That sounds familiar, man. Yeah, Down My Heart is the name of their 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 hit single that they had out years ago, and they were on Motown. So okay. they were like kind of like our little our little brothers or whatever. And we had a, a band called the Play Brothers that mm-hmm. was produced by Hakeem from the boys. Okay. And at that time we could we couldn't really sing. <laughs> 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 oh man, but we was doing our best and we was doing like little shows and stuff like that. So fast forward back to Reggie Andrews and SCU, that's where we really cultivated all the parts. Wow. Because we would we would be at Reggie Andrews spot. Um you know the band, the 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 groups that were there was GTI, uh, group to impress. Shy was another group. This uh, it was uh, Jay Swift's sister's band, and Shy became Jazzy Fat Nasties, who sang a lot of uh, on uh, the Roots albums. So when you hear the Roots albums and you hear like the female vo- vocals, is pretty better. much Jazzy Fat Nasties, wow. which was Jay Swift's sister and wow. her her band. You know what I'm saying? So. Wow. It, it was a long run, but then, you know, like, um, and I used to write a lot of songs for um, a lot of girl singers, female singers when I was at SCU. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's where all of my, I'm always writing hooks. You know what I mean? I got choruses for days, you know what I mean? So, like, that, it, it's, it, it, I feel like it's a place where I was supposed to be. Like, it called, it called for itself, and mm-hmm. I just kind of showed up, you know, luckily and fun, you know what I'm saying? And it just, Kind of this all happened that way. I know there's a long uh, way around to this, but I guess I'm just supposed to be here. It's kind of the deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nah, and you know what's crazy, Trey? I'll tell you something. So, like, you know, even, like, when you talk about hooks and, and melodies and stuff like that, I, I know that we know that for a large fact because, like, even listening to your stuff, like, early on, man, you had a lot of melody in your stuff. So it's kind of like, I know now people look at, like, artists like Drake and they'd be like, yo, he sings and he raps. But I feel like you was, like, a pioneer of that. Like, you was singing and rapping before that was the thing, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah, you know what? And that that you know, I think uh, that comes from the song "Other Fish." Yeah. And, uh, and I tell you, people thought you know I was singing "Other Fish" in the in sea. The sea. Exactly. Is. So look, look, people thought I was singing, but I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Was that for like a, a bad hey, breakup or something like that? Was that was the worst like... breakup of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh, oh man, nothing hurt that bad. Oh man, that was a hurt. <laughs> And it came, hey, look, it came out on record. It, there it was, because, like, you know, the crazy thing is, like, everybody knew the love story that it was. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it was it was a good one. And, man, but, you know, like, um, shout out to to her because she saw the greatness in, in and she saw it before it happens. Mm-hmm. She's like, look, I don't want you, I, I need you to, to do good. I don't need you to be, I, I need you to have your head on straight and win at this. 
Mm-hmm. And back then, I didn't really understand it. You know what I mean? You know, but she was right. Mm-hmm. And and we did blow up exactly how she said. You know what I mean? So that was that. And other fish was my tears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wasn't singing. That's, man, listen, oh, man. That that reggae is timeless, man. Like the melodies, all of like just the, the production, the way it was pieced together was like a masterpiece. And then I kind of think too, like, you know, just being like ahead of trends because you know, people look at like the J. Coles and the Kendricks now, and I think they like them because they're not, they don't lean too much to the gangster rap, right? Like, you know, they're more like realists, like artists that like, you could relate to them. Like, okay, good kid, mad city. Everybody grew up in the hood, but y'all were like ahead of your time as well, even with that, because I felt like even listening to y'all records, y'all didn't really, you know, you, you guys weren't glorifying gang culture. I just felt like y'all were like real human beings just putting it all on the line. You know what I'm saying? So like LA, you know, cash is checks. You will get checked for, you know, trying to be something that you're not. You know what I mean? Like we're definitely from the hood and our hood folks, and they ain't trying to be in, you know, going through the things that they going through or whatever. So like, you know, like my folks is like, yo, we proud of you. Keep on doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? So like in LA, LA was such a dangerous place it was just dangerous. It's like 82 and all of that stuff. Oh my God. It was like, it was bananas mm. and going, you know, like this, just like the gang culture and stuff like, like nobody wanted to be caught up in the, the middle of nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like for me to like try to write some gangster stuff, you know, the check was coming soon. That's a fact. That's the a check fact. is on the way. You know what I mean? Checks right. on the way. So like I call them through lyrics all the time. Mm-hmm. Cause I ain't trying to cash no checks. Yeah. That's a you know fact. what I'm saying, and that's just a real thing. And it's like, and and then much respect to those that are that had to do the, that that type of hustle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or you know, they had to stay on the pulse of the street. They had to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like every time I every time I go go you know home to see the homies or or just be around family or whatever. Man, it's like they are so happy and proud. And, and, you know, like showing, we, we're leading, giving an example. It's like, you know what, I feel like in the mix of people that we're with, they showed us how to be men. All our gangster homies showed us how to be men. And we showed them a little something on our note too. You know what I mean? So it was like a, it was like a win-win um, thing and an even exchange. And it's like, man, LA, I love it. I love it so much because like we all family. And we have we have like you know things to share with each other, and it, it was it's it was good to see that we didn't have to. First, we we didn't have to do that, and like once again, first of all, we wasn't trying to receive those checks, right. and we're gonna be one hundred about that, mm-hmm. respecting the streets for what it is, you know what I mean, and them lifting us up for what for who we are and what we do, you know what I'm saying? It's just like. It's all good. That's a fact. That's a fact. And it shows too, like, you know, you could be yourself. Like, you know, I think that's the dope thing about hip hop culture. It's like being authentic. Like people know when you faking jacks, they know when you bullshitting, but they can tell when you really real, you know, like they can tell, like you staying in your lane, you staying true to what you do. And y'all, y'all mastered that, man. So, you know, salute to y'all, you know, and all the work that y'all put in, man. You know, much respect, man. Um, We got this question, man, that we ask everybody that comes on the show. So that question is kind of like the back to the future question, like Marty and the DeLorean, right? So, you know, go back, right? So if you could go back and, you know, right before, like, I guess when you get in your deal and everything like that, if you could drop some gems on your younger self, because we got like a lot of musicians that listen to Sync Music Mondays. So they always looking for gems and knowledge. What is something you would have told your younger self back then that maybe the artists listening to this right now could benefit from? Oh my gosh. Oh, no man, no man is, man, no man is an island. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna have to, it takes a team to do this. You know what I mean? A lot of folks, you know, think they can do all of this they self. It's, it's some heavy lifting. You know what I mean? And it's like um, what I would encourage them to do is to seek out um, a good team now that's going to last you 30 years. You know what I mean? Like like a good like people that you trust, like like comb through, comb through your, your you know, see who who's good at artwork. See who's good at computer technology in your in your group. See who's good at, you know, um, 
kind of like social, like like smart, like sponsors, you know, like working with sponsors. Cause I, I I don't I don't schmooze at all. Like I ain't good at I ain't good at that at all. But if I know a homie that yo, he's a, he likes the schmooze and stuff like that. So he can go, <laughs> he can go talk to the sponsorship people and you know do that, you know, do this and that and get nice. it popping. If nice. that like l- learn your strong suit, learn your weak, where's where's your weak points? Mm-hmm. Either strengthen your weak points or find somebody that you trust in your in your circle that's strong at that and y'all move forward. This is a chariot moving forward. You get all your horses facing the same way, you know what I'm saying? And it moves forward. Mm-hmm. It even runs forward. It even mm-hmm. gallops forward. You know what I'm saying? But if all your horses is going like in different directions, the, the chariot sits still. Mm-hmm. And it's like the faster that you can get over your own BS, you know what I mean? And get and 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 get away from that ego way of thinking, like my mind, me, me, I did this, I, 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 I uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm so happy where where me and my team are right now because every like I don't have to look left right or 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 behind because everybody's playing their position and if we could all just play our positions that this was how, how it looked back you know what I mean like how do I play a better position how do I be a better listener listener to my team that's actually is, has my back we got each other's back y'all got to have each other's back man so like Cultivate your team. Make sure it's a it's 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 a strong team that can last twenty to thirty years because that's where that's it pays off. You got to have long vision too. You know, like not just short. You know, you got to look at the bigger picture of of your brand and take care of your brand. Take care of your brand like it's your child. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like take care of your brand like it's your child, but he's like kind of. He like playing next to the edge of a cliff. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you better go get this. Hey, hey. Facts. Facts. Go get it. Go, Facts. go get it. Facts. And, 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 and take care of it as best as you can. This thing that you do, you really got to take care of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I felt like we were doing a great job back then, but we really didn't. Now we really, really, really know. And, and sometimes... It ain't all about the money mm. because here's the deal. Like the money will come as, as, as soon as you, as soon as your product is tight and sharp and you know what I mean? It's going to do its thing. And, and you can't stop money from hitting you and coming to you. You just can't. Well, why? Because your product is raw and you focusing on the parts. Mm-hmm. You focusing on on the parts and, and all the bolts is tight. Like, dude, everybody is sharp. And make sure you look and and, and look through like comb through your garden a lot, mm-hmm. just to make sure there ain't no weeds in it. Mm-hmm. If it's some if if if, if your, some of your homies is acting like weeds, like either pull them up and and get them out. Like, hey, this you can do that thing, but you can't do this, this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh man, you're not really good. Uh, you know, at the cash register, let me move you to the fries and not have an ego about it. Mm-hmm. Or because there's always parts to this one thing. We can all make this one thing look good, and and the pie that people fight over, don't don't fight over that pie, nigga. You in a bakery? Facts. There's so many pie, they, You know, chop that pie up and split that pie because there's more pies. Mm-hmm. The pies ain't stopping. Not right. only pies, but we got donuts. Not only donuts, we got it's all a part of the same thing moving forward. And everybody should be able to reap the as long as they're doing it, as long as they're doing their part, everybody should should be able to reap the benefits from, from what you what you guys have created together. That's you know fact. what I mean? That's I just want fact. I just want my part of the pie. Please don't stick your fork in my part of the pie. <laughs> I'm cutting. I'm cutting them fingers off. Facts, you got to go. You know what I'm saying go. your part of the pot. I don't even want it. Facts. I want look. I don't like if something happening to you. I want that part of the pot to go to your kid. I still don't want that part of the pot. Facts. I want my part of the pot. Facts. Please, for the love of God, don't put your fork in my pot. <laughs> in my part. <laughs> That's a fact, man. That's a fact. You know what? That makes me think of like that saying that says your network is your net worth. 
So at the end of the day, like you got to be surrounded by like minded people. And, you know, it's funny because we did an episode about that where we talked about like falling victim to the homeboy syndrome. So you come up with certain people, you know, what I mean, that's your crew, that's your people. And unfortunately, there's a saying like they say, everybody can't come. So, you know, granted, that might be your boy from high school, but and you want to do business together. But if you see that they're not performing accordingly, you got to adapt and overcome, man. You got to pivot, because if not, that could ultimately just tear down what you're trying to build, you know? Keyword, pivot. Got to pivot. Because you got to pivot. And here's here's to the thing. Here's to what you're saying, too. Like, all right. So when you get when you're giving your, your circle, your homie circle a shot. And how do you give them a shot is just by you mindful watching what they do and what they're great at. Mm -hmm. And if you can, you can pinpoint what each of your homies are really good at and point them in the direction of his strength, then either he's going to be strong at what he knows how to do going to do something that he does best, or he's so strong in the thing that we're doing all together that you add him to the team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These aren't, we don't do handouts here. We don't do easy handouts. There's mm. just none of that. Mm. I want to do a great job for you. And the best thing that was said to me by my cousin, he said, you know, I don't mean, a, I don't, I don't mind being a pawn in someone else's game as long as I'm the king in my own. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that was the real thing to be said because I'm going to do my best when I jump on, onto your team to make you shine. Mm-hmm. And if you jump onto my team, you fucking best believe you better shine. Facts. Cause I'm a pull, I'm pulling weeds on Saturday. Facts. Facts, man. I'm pulling weeds. <clears throat> Real talk. And you and, and you gotta you you and you know you're wrong when you ain't when you're not doing your, your thing, you're not up to par on your part. Mm -hmm. You know it. So when the weed when the weed whacker come, dude, it's the weed whacker. Mm -hmm. You can Facts. just lay down before I chop you. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's, that's Fact. that's just that's what it is. But you know, and it's not saying, and and that way, it's like everybody get, is getting a fair shot because you know exactly the environment that you're stepping into. None of my homies gonna step into my environment unless they, because they know how we are. Mm -hmm. All of us are the same. Mm -hmm. If I'm lacking on my verses, my beats, my business, my crew is checking me. They got the weed whacker. Or they're going to move me to the fries. <laughs> and some days, here's the deal. Some days, like, yo, I'm on fire at the cash register this year. Mm -hmm. That's why we got him on the cash register. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's doing it up this year. You, we're going to have to move you to the fries, Slim. All right, fine. But I'm, I'm ooh, you taste these fries? <laughs> you <feel> these fries? <laughs> oh, got the Cajun ooh. spice. <laughs> All of that, right? And so that's how it that's how it is, but you're you're still moving forward as a unit. So if 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 you know if Imani is better at taking the lead right now, then I'm all ears. Mm -hmm. If I'm better at if I'm better at taking the lead to this campaign, be all ears. Because I got the weed whacker. And nothing's gonna stop the trajectory of us moving forward on campaigns. So it's like, you know, like there's some, and here's another thing. It's like some campaigns that we do, not everybody's like on, they might've been a part of it, but not, they're not on board. They're not fully on board. All right, dude. Well, you don't have to be on board, but don't shit on it. Mm. All right. So you take your shitting on that ass. You take your shitting on things ass over here and you champion whatever the fuck you're championing over there, because we are in the mind state of making sure this thing gets forward successfully. So we don't need nice. your shit in this. You know yeah. what I mean? So we need the energy of this is succeeding. Mm. If I have doubts, I'm stepping out because mm. I want I want the energy of somebody that the, all the cheerleaders on this camp on this project to make sure it does well. Mm. And then and if, you know what I'm saying? And it's just how you look at it. Mm -hmm. It's all facts, man. That's all facts, Trey. And you know what? You're right because it's like when we talk about like just the power of words. Like words have power. Like people don't realize that. It's like you know if you hang around people that's always like negative and they like, oh, I'm going through. Oh, it's so hard. They don't realize like those words are reaffirming their situation, right? So it's like you want to be around people that are motivated, people that actually want to see good for you, you know, and not only good for you but good for themselves as well. Because we know hurt people hurt people. So you know you can't expect a, a blind person to see your vision because they don't even see a vision for themselves. You dig me? So you know just making sure people got vision, people got faith and just motivated you know so yo that's you dropping gems man that's that's a lot of gems right there 
you know here's here's the thing to that what you're saying too is like that's why we have to find the spark in all of us you know everybody's spark is different but when you show a man in doubt his own spark you can't stop him from succeeding you know what i mean it's not like it's not a race Mm -hmm. but when you when you find your spark dude when you find your spark i i can't even nothing can stop you it's like every the, the thing about the spark is it contains all the parts of its own success you know what i'm saying like kentucky fried chicken got the spark when he was like in the 60s <laughs> facts i'm just saying you know what i mean like everybody gets their own spark at a different time too so like not that we, sh- we should have patience for them but when they arrive they arrive facts Unless they just really, unless they just really awesome, you know, what was me? I ain't, I ain't trying to sing that song at, at all either. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my grind. I'm on my game. Well, I just found my spark. I either, I'm, I'm, I found my spark as a DJ. I found my spark as a producer. I found my spark as an MC. I found my spark with, with, with far side. When I always find my spark and my spark, my sparks that can in the same, from the same fire. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I immerse myself in it. You know what I mean? That's all I know. I don't know nothing. I don't. Well, I know a few things, but I don't really know too much. Mm-hmm. What well, I mean, the, that's, the lane, that's yeah. True. Knowing that, and so like, you know, when I when I talk to students, when I when I work with students or whatever, I try to. I'm listening to them to see what they see what I'm hearing here if they're hearing their passion. Mm-hmm. And I put fuel on that on that that spark. I'm like, let me pour some, whoop, pour some more fuel on there. <laughs> Boom. Right, and they just right. blow, they just blow up because you're showing them them. Because mm-hmm. when they're when they're blinded, sometimes they don't they don't see they're all in their own head. Mm-hmm. So I encourage anybody, if you see a spark in your friend, like give it some water, you know, give it some, give it some gasoline. You know what I'm saying? Let them help them to ignite. You know what I mean? Because you you can't help someone that can't see it. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Yep. You got to pour into people, man. Your network is your net worth. You know, like-minded people, man. And even if they can't see it, like you said, motivate them. Like, don't kick a man when he's down. You know, like, you got to be able to build each other up, man. So, you know, all gems. But you you see their spark, you see their spark to be able to motivate them. Mm-hmm. Like, boom. Oh, there it is. Like, yeah, it's been there all the time. It's been there all the time. That's what the Wiz was all about, right? <laughs> That's a fact. When they went to see when when when, uh, when Dorothy went to go see the Wiz, when Diana Ross and Michael Jackson went to go see Richard Pryor. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. Facts. It was there, man. You just yo, you gotta cultivate it. You just gotta fan the flames, yeah. man. That's it, man. So you know, fire, fire, Trey. So I got two more, two more questions for you, man. I ain't gonna hold too much of your time, man. But um, so one question I wanted to ask you, like um. I know that that passing me by, man, that record went like catastrophic. It was out of here. So like, I mean, it, it was just like, it, it, it was phenomenal, man. I mean, even everything was perfect from the visuals and the video to the the way you guys attacked that beat. Like, you know, some were more m- melodic than others. I mean, it was humor. It was, it was just very dope, man. How, I guess at what point did you guys realize like, yo, this record really blew up. Like it's different. Like what at what point did it really hit you? Like, yo, this is we out of here. Yo, you know what's crazy is I remember being at STU when the loop was just playing on the uh, on the drum machine. And you know, you can you can feel it in the hallway. You know, I feel like the energy was just always there. The hair on your arms is kind of raised and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It, it I feel like it kind of wrote itself um it was just always that energy was always looming mm-hmm. around us every every part of it from from being at scu and when we were making the, the demo of it it just it just felt like it you know what i mean like this is it this is this is this is this is one of our this is one of the ones mm-hmm. and then when we were all mixing it because we were all in it was like it was like a couple of us mixing it together we were like doing all the mutes and everything like that because we had to manually do they didn't have the the automation wasn't there yet right, so right. we had to we had to like slide things up and push the you know push the buttons down on different parts so all the mutes and the drop the dropouts that you hear that's mm-hmm. us it was myself laj j swift 
and I, I don't know who else was in there. Maybe Fat was in there, and we was like, everybody had their because it was like a twenty. It was more than a twenty-four track thing. So everybody had wow. the track that they needed to be on to do the mutes or the or the automating it. Mm-hmm. And you can. It was just how it was made. It was just a beautiful thing. Like and people don't know, they just jam to it. Mm-hmm. But we was going through it. You know what I mean? From that to, I remember uh, making the video and Sanji was like, yo, you know, what if we, you know, shot this and you guys were upside down and, you know, it was in black and white and we love black and white because it's like, it's like, it's so like so artsy, uh, man. It's so it like so this, artsy and you know? it's like black and white is like a deep, different kind of color. It's mm-hmm. like if you could see in black, see through in black and white, it's just like the shades of the different shades made it like so, so nice. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but then when you, you know, it's like the world was up, the, our world was upside down. And then, the, you know, people walking through it, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, we felt all the parts. It's like the song called for itself what it was supposed to be. And it chose us to be a part of it. And that's how I always look at it. And it was just like, you, you could just feel the hairs raising on your uh, on your arms Facts. every time because that that video was just next level all the parts of that that uh, whole campaign was lit mm-hmm. it was lit it was definitely lit and then when you're in the clubs there was just so many parts of like knowing that this thing was taking off mm-hmm. when you hear it when you hear it in the clubs you know the whole deal and it drops and the crowd's like oh now when my younger my days thing. i used like, to ah yeah and right the yo and we had a thing too it's like verse wise who like we have like let's say everybody has their verse so like who's gonna set it off and who's got cleanup those are two important markers of making hit songs to us Mm -hmm. who's setting it off now in my younger days i used used to to nothing was nothing was messing with that verse to, like that verse had to be first mm-hmm. and then my dear my dear my dear you do not know me but i know you very well and let me tell you ah oh, come on man what a way to clean up right look mm-hmm. i'm getting i'm getting the chicken skin what a way to <laughs> what a way to clean it up yeah you know what i'm saying and it's like the way that we orchestrated and then the parts in the the, the filling in the middle was good too you know what i mean mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah cool. man great so much melody so much vibe so much man. so many like, parts so many perspectives of why she passed you by as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And and it was so relatable to the world. Like, you know, everybody talk about getting the chick, but nobody talk about, yo, she passed me, passed me up. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was, it was um, match made in heaven. Really, it, it really made itself. It's kind of like we were lucky to be able to color by numbers. Yeah. Because it was, it was already, it was already a hit. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, man. Without a doubt, that that record is timeless perfection. Like it's just, it's a work of art. You know, like I said, from the visuals to the, because sometimes like you'll hear a record and they're like, "Yo, the record's fire," and then you see the visuals and there's a disconnect, and you're like, eh, "I'll just stick to listen to the the audio, right?" right. But this this was like, <laughs> like I I just listened to it in my car, right. you know. Yeah. But but this <laughs> this right here. <laughs> like damn why you do it like that right but exactly. <laughs> but nah man perfectly executed man it's, it's thomas man classic man classic y'all y'all goats for that man so you know definitely man appreciate what y'all contributed to the culture and what y'all continue to bring to the culture and i guess just closing man like you know like talk about i guess what's what's on the horizon man all the dope stuff you got going on king oh man well um so What's really cool about where we are today is, is fueled by, I mean, like there was, there was a, a, a large time where we were separated, you know, there was, you know, Imani and Booty Brown on one end and then Fat Lip and myself, and we were separated, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was doing our thing. And then we came together with, came together with the Fat and Slim stuff. So was, there's a lot of music out there that um, people can kind of catch up to the journey of where we are to date, right? Mm. So there's the the fat and slim that we did with um, uh, me and Fat Lip did together. There's also um, humble beginnings and all the things that that um, Imani and and Rome I did, and then Imani had like a solo record too. Um, that was that was pretty cool. I had solo records, uh, Liberation album, 
um, Slim Kid Trays Cafe, you know, let's see what else. So to, oh, you know, Stallone, the loneliest punk, fat lips, you know, all these things that we were constantly just doing stuff. Um, there was also testing the waters with the three, like myself, Imani and uh, Romai. And now there's Imani, Fat Lip and Slim Kid Trey record that we did with Spear of the Nation that people can, they can find it right now. And it's fire. <laughs> oh, and it's just the start, you know, it's just the start of us getting back together. And I feel like right now, Imani was pretty much responsible for bringing us back together as the three. We're still missing um, Roma, uh, Booty Brown. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we'd love to, you know, have him with us to celebrate 30 year anniversary coming up November, you know, in November to move forward and make more music and stuff like that. But we're just, we're in, we're creating right now. Gotcha. We're creating we're touring so like look look out for us in, on, on, in your cities you know what i'm saying follow us um on instagram at the far the far side two for two the the f-a-r-s-i-d-e at the moment got you you know what i mean at the moment f-a-r um s-i-d-e two for two just to keep up on where we're where we're at please come to the shows mm -hmm. please buy some merch please rock rock this this time of celebration is what's happening right now for us. You know what I mean? Aside for that, me, I I'm DJed last night. I'm about to go DJ like in about half hour. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> to right. keep my musical chops up and just to hear sonically what triggers the crowd. I'm about, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a party rock DJ, you know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm keeping it, I'm keeping my head in the game of the music because we're we're still making music, we're still recording. So mm -hmm. Fine. that's the deal of where you know where things are and where we are today and it's a beautiful thing we're still celebrating life man fire. that's what i gotta say fire fire man well yo y'all heard it here man yo shout out to trey shout out to the far side man just the goats man goats man thomas music man so we appreciate you king thanks for taking the time man definitely man definitely man thanks thanks for having me man thank you so much man and um yeah dude anytime See y'all at some shows, you know, you know what I mean? Like, um, and check out some of that music. It's on Spotify. It's on uh, iTunes. Yeah, Imani, Fat Lips, Slim Kid Trey, check that out. And then the new stuff that we're working on now is on the way. So we're in a trench, y'all. Right. Fire. That's All what right. it is, man. Yo, big shout out to Trey, the far yes. side. Sync Music Mondays, y'all know what it is, man. Peace.